just about to say. Uh, we'll get to Ezekiel Elliott with Bart Scott in just a second, but first, Brewers and D-backs and Lorenzo Cain elevates at the center field wall. I thought he was one of the best center fielders in baseball, man. He's, he's excited. He's a human highlight reel. Couple World Series appearances, one championship. One of my favorite players. I ain't doing no blonde dye. Elevation. Um, right here, here, here Bart. Get on the real Derek world. Jones Jr. catches the reverse alley oop, puts it down. That's elevation. He probably can't shoot that. If he could dunk that good, he probably can't. That looks like Bart in high school. Not the guy dunking, the guy watching the guy fly by him and dunk. Oh, come on, man. We all know you the dude that showed up to, you show up to the park with 25 wristbands on like you can ball. <laughs> I did wear headbands. Band, I did wear headbands. Knee brace. Yeah, no knee brace, but headbands, wristbands. Socks and Dallas Cowboys. Fly, bro. I got next. Get out of here, scrub. <laughs> Since entering the NFL in 2016, Ezekiel Elliott has 4,000 rushing yards. That's 600 more yards than Todd Gurley, who's second in rushing yards in wow. that span. Well, now Zeke wants to get paid like Gurley was and is contemplating holding out if he doesn't. Bart, how much easier, it, easier will it be to defend the Cowboys if there is no Zeke to contend with? So much easier because he's not going to drop the eighth man in the box because who do you respect? I don't even know who their backup running back is. Ezekiel Elliott's been the, the best running back mm -hmm. since he's been in the league. And... and that's talking about the, the year where he missed games. You know, he's also a dual threat. He's a guy that's tremendous in pass protection as well. And we've seen what the offense looks when it goes through Dak. Right. It's not so well. We're talking about, you know, Zeke should have been the rookie of the year. They gave it to, to Dak just because it always goes to the position if things are close. But he sets the table for everybody. He sets that play action Amari Cooper down the field. Do you expect to get much from Jason Witten? You're going to get five yards and a hook. You know what I mean? So if you want to continue to get the big plays, the explosive plays down the field, you have to have Ezekiel Elliott because all you're going to do is roll coverage and double um, Amari Cooper. You would put, I mean, you can drop anybody on Jason Witten. He ain't running past no Body. And, it, you know, Dak Prescott is going to try, try and do too much. He's, he's trying to get his contract. Ezekiel Elliott, to me, is the most important player on that offense, period. Let's go around the NFL. And let's just say we had an open draft of all the Dallas Cowboys players. Yep. Anyone, you can have them. Any compensation, just open bidding. Yep. Who would fetch the biggest price? And that's the best player, and that would be Ezekiel Elliott. There wouldn't be people trading a couple first-round picks for Dak Prescott. I don't believe that. Amari Cooper would get a first-round pick. It wouldn't be multiple picks. Marcus Lawrence probably get a first-round pick. Yes, Travis absolutely. Frederick. They got some yeah. talented players. Some of the offensive linemen, Travis yeah. Fager, if he was built to get a clean bill of health, he's definitely worth a first-rounder. But the only one worth multiple, that is Zeke. I can go to the numbers. I can go to what I see. I can go to when I watch the Cowboys, how the, this franchise changed when they drafted Ezekiel Elliott. Now, I thought Zeke was going to be special. He was one of the special running backs we ever had at Ohio State. Okay, Ohio State. And he plays every down, like you said. If you don't give him the ball on second down, he will be blocking pass protection on third down. He can either come out of the backfield. He's a great at blitz pickup. Last season... When the Dallas Cowboys, when they win time of possession, let's just forget the names. When they win time of possession, they were 8-0. The reason why they win time of possession wasn't that offensive line. It's because Ezekiel Elliott. He's their most valuable player. I tell you guys all the time, Dennis Green taught me that they have a ranking system on the team, that they evaluate everything, and ultimately, the 53-man roster is evaluating. He ranks the players 1 to 53. Ezekiel Elliott is clearly ranked number one Dallas Cowboy by me and by those, the experts that watch the game and respect the game. And how much easier are the Falcons to defend if Julio's not out there? Would the Chiefs be without Tyree Kill, which we might see this year? Mm -hmm. we, we, we saw it kind of for the Rams without Todd Gurley. I mean, he was there in the yeah. Super Bowl, but not really, and they scored three points. That When we are talking about the most important, yep. most impactful non-quarterbacks in football on the offensive side of the ball. If Zeke's not one, he's in that top five. Okay. He, and so you, you, you see, you saw the Giants. When Odell went out, what happened to them? Like, when you are this type of talent, it's not always the best player's the most important guy. Yeah. Sometimes that's the case, yeah. but sometimes it matches up. And with Dak, we've seen Dak struggle when perfect situations. 
great offensive line, great running game, eight in the box, and Dak still at times yeah. struggled. If all of a sudden you're, I think Rod Smith is their backup. Like if all of a sudden it's just a guy back yeah. there, then Dak is not facing. Well, the eight defense man. is going to get more complex because right. they don't have to show what they're doing, so they can zone blitz because they don't have any respect for Dak and being able to break down the defense. But I'll play devil's advocate for just a second. You know, the reason why you know you look at you know, where Zeke is, is they're running, they ride, they've rolled a lot of the trade off the tires. So if I'm thinking about giving him an extension, you know, he's in year four, going into year five, and then if you give him an extension, you're talking about paying him essentially till year nine. You know, and I think a lot of general managers are going to be scared off from what the Ty Gurley contract has really done out there in L.A., handcuff the organization, because you know eventually that, you know, these running backs are going to, to wear down. And Ezekiel's taking a lot of hits. He's, he's taking a lot of carries. So maybe they think, okay, well, let's just see if we can get him for, for five years and see if we can find a replacement for him next year just in case he wants the $15 million a year price tag. Do you think he holds out? Do you think the Cowboys will I let think, him get I, to I that? Think, I think he has to hold out. I think that's the only play he has. He'll never have more leverage this year as this team knows next year they're going to have to address a lot of contracts. They got to address the cornerback position who's going to get paid. They got to address Dak. So they understand, he understands that if he's going to, going to get the oil, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, it's going to have to be this year because going forward, he may not have an opportunity to really have the type of leverage that he has this year because they have Super Bowl aspirations. There. Bart, you played this game a long time. You've seen a lot of players who develop and were able to be competent NFL players. Ezekiel Elliott, since I met him when he was 18, there's certain guys you know, Bart, they just different. Yep. They born to play this game. They got the body for it. They got the psyche for it. They lift the weights. They love the contact. That's who Ezekiel it is. Big old head, running back, natural running skills, big, thick body, can right. catch out of the backfield, does not get hurt. You don't see a lot of people get square shots on him. To me, Zeke's one of them running backs that can play a long yeah. time. He takes care of his body, and he there's just certain people just and, meant to do certain things. And I understand your point as far as you do an extension. The extension probably would run through his ninth season, but you would essentially you'd be guaranteeing he's on the team through his seventh season. And so I get the argument against it. The argument against it is, well, we can guarantee that by just letting the contract run out, fifth-year option, franchise, franchise tag, yep. franchise tag. But that removes the human element. That removes the disgruntled player. That removes yeah. the, the possibility of a holdout. And the cow, listen, this Cowboys team is talented. It's not as talented as a 93 team. 93 team could suffer a holdout without Emmett, right. go 0-2, and then go 15-2 and the rest of the year. This Cowboys team can't right. have the hiccup. We saw a Seahawks team thought they had Super Bowl aspirations the year coming off the Super Bowl loss. Cam Chancellor, great player, not Zeke, he held out a couple weeks. They start slow. That cost them a home playoff game and a chance to get back to the Super Bowl. If Zeke's serious about a holdout, they almost have no choice but to pay. They did lose the first three games that he sat out, or he sat out. He was, he was suspended. suspended. And they well, scored 22 total points in those Well, well they got to keep pace with the Philadelphia Eagles, too. That's going to put some pressure on the organization as well. All right. Take a break. Coming up, Danny Ainge comes to Kyrie's defense. Yes, you heard that right. That's next on First Things First. How's Danny Ainge keep getting in this damn show, man? Give me a low shot here, Bart. Let me see that. Oh, Get that, baby. Oh, yes, yeah, almost 8 o'clock. Let me show you that. Yeah, Let me, oil. Now, listen, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm Instagram a picture at 11 and show you how that black skin works, baby. <laughs> Self-lubricated. <laughs>